trying to get in shape for my trip to India. Christ said to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. The problem is, we have no idea who they are. How are we supposed to effectively communicate the gospel to a people we know nothing about? How they think, what kind of pressures they have in their daily lives. Come with me and let's meet India face to face. One of the things that surprised me about India was how much variety there is in the country. India's got everything. Plains, mountains, jungle, desert. Climate ranges from tropical heat to Himalayan cool. India has it all. These are simple people, many of whom have never even seen paper money. Yet in heaven's eyes, each one is worth more than the whole world. But they live in fear and uncertainty, worried about offending one of the millions of gods that they worship. How do we reach them with the good news of Jesus Christ? God plants keys in each culture that can provide an avenue for the gospel to enter, if we can find it. And today we're out looking for a key to the 900 million Hindu hearts in India. What's the name of this town? This name of the town is Alwar Tirnahari. It is, uh, I think, uh, three, four kilometers from Malawi. I think about uh, nearly 25,000 uh, to 50,000 people live in this place. This is the main town in the area? Yes. Is this a temple? Yeah, these are all uh, temple. Everywhere you can see Hindu temples. Every street has a temple in this uh, small town. Yeah, this is the courtyard uh, of the temple. And there are uh, strong mini gods who are built up in this structure. More than uh, 30,000 gods are engraved in the stones. 30,000 gods are represented there? Yes, the gods and their wives. How can you break this cultural barrier and bring, bring Christ into this kind of system? Satan was so cunning and you know, adapting the Bible principle and he has imprinted the sanctuary service in this Hindu temple where you can find courtyards in the front and holy place in the middle and the most holy place at the back. And at the most holy place, the gods are locked for one year. And once in a year, you see, as per the principles in the Bible in the Old Testament, the Day of Atonement, in the same kind, the Hindu temple the doors are open for the people to come and have darshan, that is to worship and uh, to pay their penance, even offering sacrifice of goats, chicken and cows. Once in a year they bring in hundreds of goats and sheep and uh, you know chickens to offer sacrifice in front of this temple and they offer the blood to the priest inside uh, the most holy place and they feel the sins are forgiven through that. It's all adapted from the whole testament, sanctuary service. What does the priest do with the blood? He will automatically go and take it inside and sprinkle on the altar yeah. and uh, give their gods uh, the, 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 to pay the penance. This man has a sign on his head. He says it is Namam, which is called uh, God says footprints on his forehead. Mm. Yes. Which God? That is called the Adinada Alvar Permal. Is it God of wealth? He, that God gives him special blessings. Oh. A great family or happiness? <laughs> And the 
Yeah, he gives him uh, enough food to survive in this uh, world. Where did the sacrificial system begin? In the Bali Sultra Kariangala, Epmadan Nadeberma, under Kadal Kinik Bali Sultra, the very ancient time, they say. Uh, they don't know the years, but it's from the ancient time. Even before uh, we could have the languages, God introduced uh, the system of sacrifice. That's what He says. Yeah. You know why? It is what it was an uh, early days uh, tradition. Where did sin come from? To have a remedy from their sins, to erase their sins, they offer sacrifice. Where did sin come from? Without the knowledge, sin entered the world. Okay, he is wearing the sacred thread. And uh, he uh, falls on the group of uh, the class of Brahmin. And right I'm, now he is also I'm, one of the priests in the temple. I am also very pro proud of it. Uh, remember, he is very proud be, that. Moreover, be content what we possess. Yeah. Very good. What happens if you work really hard in there? Well, if we really work hard uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the town, Alwar, where we have just uh, done the interview. There are 90% of the people are Bra Brahmins. And uh, if we try very much hard, we will be stoned to death. I'm af afraid of that part. Before you go to that temple, you have to come and worship the God here and go to there. Step by step, there are nine temples like this around this town. Once in a year, for the Day of Atonement, people will come around and sleep around the temple and worship their gods for 15 days and then go back. So my question is, how can you break the system of uh, the Hindu customs and traditions? Unless the Lord intervenes, we cannot do anything by our uh, strength. Yeah, this is a sacred, uh, you know, pond. People think uh, their sins will be washed away if they take bath inside this uh, pond. Yeah. We will just have translation from this lady. She okay. belongs to this temple. Yeah. First, the God will take bath here in this pond, and then all the men will take bath uh, to signify that they will wash their sins and go back behind the God to worship Him. Does she know about the Holy God in heaven? Yeah, it's great. So, big God who is sitting up in heaven is a Brahma who created everything. So, each one has a fate. Yeah. Each one has a fate. God has written, you have to live like this. So, that's how it will happen. But does she know that that one true God way up in heaven, the strongest one loves her. Yeah, yeah. And the other Kadabul Namalati Nesikar Ninga. Yeah, the Kadabul Namalati Nesikar Ninga. So he, she knows that that God even takes care of the ant and the small insects which goes around uh, everywhere in the sand. It's all controlled by him. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And so she, yes, she loves him. Mm. Pardon me? So she loves him then? Uh, yeah. The same God she worships. 24 hours she is thinking of him and worshipping him. Well, that's the same God we worship. Yeah, if you worship him, only good things will happen to you. Yeah, only our heart should be clean. When they are possessed with the, the devil, there will be fire inside this uh, spot. Okay? And they will walk on the fire. Yeah. Really? Yes. They will fill up uh, with the fire inside. They will go inside and a lot of uh, 
uh, firewoods will be there and they will burn the firewoods and uh, people will just go inside into the fire and come back and at uh, that time they will be really possessed with devil. Uh, so they think there's a lot of power in Hinduism. Yes, they think there is a lot of power which they get from Satan in Hinduism. You see, in the Bible, uh, Satan is also powerful, mm -hmm. uh, it says, and uh, he can do much powerful things because the Lord has ordained him in a way. He has a lot of talents to exhibit with people. So, do miracles bring people into the truth? Um, is that what it takes? Miracles in the sense, um, it is... Healings and things like that. Yeah, it is not total healing uh, in Hinduism. Once they, have, they are possessed with the devil spirit, they can go into the fire and come back. For the next 30 days they cannot walk. You know, how oh, really? ugly it is. <laughs> yeah. So they do get burned. <laughs> they get burned in their leg. They just and, don't feel it. <laughs> yes. At that time they don't feel it. Uh. When they walk in the fire. But for the next 30 days they'll have to hang up their legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when people see true healing from Jesus. Yeah, when people see the true healing from Jesus, then they are in the clutches of the true truth mm -hmm. and in the love of God. So this kind of things become immaterial to them because they need not pay penance. They do not go sacrifice in the Hindu temple. And they are free men and they have a lot of freedom in Christianity. Mm. This is what we must teach uh, the Hindu people. So the best way into the Hindus' hearts is to heal a blind man or a sick person? Yes, the best way is to fast and pray and do uh, miracles for them. Then they will be inside uh, the fold of Christ. Isn't that exciting? We've seen three ways into the Hindu heart. One is the sanctuary structure, the, the way that the sanctuary is built with the courtyard, the holy place, the most holy place. And the other one is a substitutionary sacrifice, the idea that something else can pay for your sins. And the third key is the healing power of Jesus Christ doing miracles. There's another key that I found while over there, but I didn't get a chance to put it on tape. And that is a Daniel 2 prophecy, where a stone will come out of space and smash into the world. Everything will be obliterated. The problem is, in the Hindu religion, there's no escape plan. And so using these keys, using these understandings, using these avenues, we can reach the Hindu heart where they're at and give them the truth, the joy of service of Jesus Christ, of a firm foundation to stand upon. This small peek into Hinduism has really aroused my curiosity. Join me for more shows of India face to face. And my burden it is light. Come learn how me. I'll give you light. Come learn how me. I'll give you light.